that very soon, I would expect in the next couple of years, we'll start seeing publications talking about its applications, not only about the second reversal, but testicular sperm extraction, various seals, and so forth. So a lot of it actually was derived from this fine gentleman, Dr. Thomas, and uh, looking for the video clips. was built upon interoperative basal microscopy. The use of an operating microscope which can improve our visualization by 25 times to allow us to use those surgical threads which are one third of the diameter of an eyelash and be prepared to use those techniques and scales to perform the more simple dissecting reversal of the basal endoctomy as well as the more complex basal epididymostomy. More importantly, he taught us that he wanted us not only to practice, but also to define state of the art. And in that search, when robotic technology started knocking on the door for oncology, this technology, the Da Vinci Intuitive Surgical Systems, came out and allowed us to begin asking the question whether it could be applied to male fertility reconstructive surgery. And the reason why is because at the end of the day, we're just human. We have limited dexterity, and of course that dreaded tremor for which many male fertility specialists probably gave up rock climbing. And it's a system where there's a, just a review for those of you who might not have worked with this system or seen it before. It has a master and a slave component. It has three or four arms, depending on how much you want to spend. And we often position the arms so that they're at a 10 degree angle to each other and to the table. And this is the master console where you can sit at ergonomically, be very comfortable, rest your head against the headrest. And it has a lot of fancy buttons of which the one most important for us to talk today is the downscaling software, which allows us to eliminate trauma. It has some fancy endo risk technology talk about more. And you can see that it enhances the dexterity down at the level of the operation. And you can often set the downscaling software at a ratio of 5 to 1. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And the instrumentation is getting better, but not quite there yet. So in the spirit of uh, actually Dr. Falcone, in his pioneering work here, where he actually looked at robotic assisted laparoscopic tubal reanastomosis. Um, working, talking with him, and also with the encouragement of Dr. Thomas, we then embarked on this journey where we published our first study in 2004, looking at whether, hey, can we do this? Is it possible? So we kept it simple. We actually collected discarded vasodeferent specimens from our cystectomy patients with our high long of oncology here at the Clifton Neurological Institute. We kept it simple, we just used nano suture and used the um, modified one layer technique. And we put six sutures through and through. And then in between, we put six more sutures to buttress the anastomosis at the muscularis level. The arms are designed so that they have a little wrist right here. And it adds two degrees of freedom down to the level of the operation. And the tips are designed with a one millimeter tip here. As expected, since it was very new, the operative times were increased uh, about twofold to about 80 minutes. We did five robotically assisted and five using just a microscope assisted conventional basal endoscopy. 
And the times initially were twice as long, but over time, as you gain the experience, it would go down. And the technology will only continue to get better, um, as all technology would do. And right here, we can see we're just putting in the last through and through suture, using nylon on nylon. It's quite facile. As well as using um, a zoom function that exists. And this is just checking the placement. For all the studies that we did, um, very simply to just check paint and see if we pass the suture through the anastomosis. And sometimes we would also um, <coughs> irrigate through with a 24 gauge angiocat, check for patency as well. One thing that's, well, with every technology, there's a weakness, and probably the number one weakness that the technology has is that there's no tactile feedback. Nothing's going to be good as what we feel through our fingers. And so, to be Issues are you have what are called haptic events. It can be broken sutures, bent needles, or loose stitches. And whereas with microscope assisted conventional vasectomy reversals, they're very, very rare. You can see that just, you know, with our initial learning experience, there were a fair, a fair number of broken sutures, bent needles, or loose stitches that just took time to become familiar with. Fortunately, it did not affect um, patency rates. You know, patency was 100% for both groups. Um, haptic events were increased with the robotic assisted. It was nice to see that there is no trauma with the motion down scaling software. Still, the embark on the next level of investigation, which was you know, to reflect what many male fertility specialists use, which is a multi layer approach, as well as 10 LIN, 9 or nylon. Um, for those of you who are familiar with it, you already know that the 10 or nylon is approximately 20 micrometers wide thread with a needle which is 70 micrometers. The 9 or nylon is approximately 30 micrometers wide with a needle that's about 100 micrometers. And so here what we did was use the 10 or nylons, double on, and the mucosal layers approximated using six to eight of these sutures. And then over the top, we approximated uh, the muscularis layer with interrupted nine of the nylons once again. So the end of this technology allows us to increase those two degrees of freedom, and what they are is pitch up and down and then yaw, which is side to side. And I liken it to moving up um, conventional instruments are like using chopsticks. And um, the new technology is actually like placing your hands down at the level of the operative site and being manipulated tissue with your own hands. The other nice feature is that you're able to use your left hand as well as your right hand, which is a, a nice feature. Sometimes the suture angles just act. <coughs> For example, here you can just switch to your left hand and switch it there. And with this preliminary data, we began feeling like, you know, this is something we should look into more. And we even started thinking about how would we set it up here with the anesthesia. This is the master console where the surgeon would stand. Um, you'd have a table side assistant. You'd have your two arms at 10 degrees to each other and 10 degrees to the table. And the patient would be lying underneath the arms. This is the anastomosis, the inner sutures. And then those are tied down. 